Let's go! It's playoff time for everyone, baby. Welcome into another edition of Friday Night Fever. I am your guide, Matt St. Jean, as we navigate these playoff waters. My top lieutenant, Rhea Thornton, is standing by in West Point. She'll let us know how the Green Wave started their quest for a sixth straight state championship appearance. But first, our game of the week, East Webster and East Union. Let's get right to it. These two teams played each other in week five. The Wolverines won that game, but the Urchins haven't lost since. Six straight for East Union. East Webster started strong. Sneaky play here, totally faked me out of my shoes. Bryston Johnson grabbed the snap and scampered into the end zone to give the Wolverines an early six to nothing lead. And a nice little boost right there from his teammate. After an East Union three and out, Caleb Warnock handed off to Zy Ford and look at the big man rumble. Rumble, rumble, rumble. No one is catching him. Big run and the Wolverines went up 13 to nothing after the missed extra point. East Union turned the ball over on downs and the Wolverines looked for a big score, but on fourth down, Zy Ford was stuffed by Kai Roberts at the line of scrimmage. Urchins got the ball back. And they took advantage. Rhett Johnson handed off to Hayden Frazier up the middle, and nobody touched him. 32 yards to the house with the Urchins on the board. They scored 17 unanswered points to take the lead at halftime. And there was another classic game between these two teams. East Webster held off a late Urchin charge and won again 34-31. to They'll play LaFleur County next week. Down to Ackerman, Baldwin, and Choctaw County. Both Baldwin and Choctaw County scored 41 points in the first round wins. Tonight, a matchup of powerhouses. After a Choctaw fumble, Baldwin got in the, end, the red zone quick on this play. Oh. Dylan Johnson dropped back and handed off to the workhorse JoJo Christian. And this is one of the most strong arm plays you'll see tonight, folks. He got out of five tackles before three charges took him down. Just short of the goal line, no touchdown, and the ref said it wasn't a fumble. The next play, though, touchdown. Braylon Pippen dove in like a bullet for a quick score. That put up Baldwin 13 to nothing just before the end of the first quarter. Baldwin, or Choctaw rather, not going out quietly. Choctaw County found a way to respond in the second quarter. Connor Jewell took the snap and quickly launched the ball to the end zone. Caleb Cunningham, the fabulous freshman, he got that touchdown. It was 13 to seven. Baldwin. They went on in the second half and opened the game up. They won 30 to 14. They'll play Charleston next week. Two 1A ball district champion TCPS hosted West Tallahatchie. First district title in program history, and now the playoff run began for the Eagles. TCPS up 22 to nothing. Rodarius Moss running to his right. Carter Smith stayed disciplined, tried to drag him down, and then Brewer Bailey came flying in, knocked the ball out, but the referee blew his whistle early. Yikes. Choctaw's got a break on that one. Moss going to the air on this play, completed it, but a great tackle by Baylor King to stop him for no gain. Choctaw's had to punt. On the punt, Laith Holiday fielded it cleanly, and there he goes. Grabs the edge and trying to find a few more blocks. Gets taken down, but set the Eagles up with great field position. And first play of the drive for TCPS, Jake Prather was like, man, it's cold out here. I want to get back to the bench where the heaters are. And John Paul Yates said, man, I got you, bro. Quick strike for the Eagles. That put them up 29 to nothing. They go on to win 45 to zero. Smithville went into the Delta, traveled to McEvans. Warriors up 20 to nothing, though, to start the second half. Chandler Brunette, or Brunette, back to pass, picked off by Mark Dorsey. This kind of was a theme for the Smithville Seminoles in this one, unfortunately. Another interception right there. McEvans, they held Smithville scoreless in this game. 32 to 0. Well, they will play TCPS next week. Big in the first round. Yes, there we go. We are at Simmons right now, and this was the, uh, the second half uh, kickoff. Returned all the way for a touchdown, and you know what? Simmons, they are 10-0 this year. 
and uh, they're, they're pretty good. They seem to be the class of 1A, and yes, Sean Holiday, you can use that as bulletin board material if that opportunity presents itself. They won 66 to nothing. Elsewhere in 1A playoff action, let's bring up the scores. Biggersville avoided the upset against South Delta, 28 to 24. They'll play Simmons, yikes. And then West Lowndes, they beat Rickton and French Camp fell to Taylorsville. West Lowndes will play Taylorsville. Caledonia won its first playoff game ever last week. Could they make it two in a row? There are the Cavaliers. They beat Kosciuszko in the first round. And Pontotoc, they grinded out a victory against Gentry. Caledonia on offense, and man, that wing tee, wing tee is tricky. Fooling everyone out there. Darius Triplett had the ball, and that man can run. Breaking tackles left and right, and he danced into the end zone to put the Cavs up six to nothing after the extra point was no good. Pontotoc on offense now. Nick Townsend dropping back to pass. Bryce Crestman with the reception and breaks a tackle and a nice 20-yard gain, but the Warriors return the ball over on downs. Cavaliers back on offense. And Daniel Woburn handed off to Triplett, and look at this play. Jersey almost dragged off his shoulder pads, stayed upright, and then just like took off. Like a speeding bullet, like Superman. 13 to nothing, Cavaliers at that point. And he ain't just one dimensional either. He can play some defense too. Townsend over through the pass, and who is there? Just getting up, showing off the vert. Darius Triplett, that's who. Dude was a beast tonight. Giant of the Week nominee, I'm telling you right now. Caledonia would score to extend its lead, and they go on. They go into Pontotoc and win 27 to 8. Big time battle in Fulton between Itawamba and Ripley, Rip City. Coach Clint Hoots and the Itawamba Indians trying to continue their streak of wins right here, and this is a good way to do it. Getting the ball into the hands of Isaac Smith, and he gone. Dude is pretty good. 25 yards to the house, touchdown, 7 0 Itawamba. Second quarter now, Ripley with the ball. Ty Long going for the deep ball off the nice play fake. And oh, he caught it, but oh, didn't get the toe in bounds. Gotta have that sideline awareness. A few plays later, Itawamba back on offense. It ain't broke, don't fix it. Hand that ball to Isaac Smith and just see what he does with it. 40 yards on the scamper to the five yard line. That, however, would lead to a field goal. 10 0, and let's do a little kicker appreciation there. Ooh, snuck it right in there. 10 0, Indians. Ripley loses to Itawamba 30 to 9. And let's go elsewhere in 4A. Louisville avoided the upset against Clarksdale. They'll play Caledonia. And Senatobia shocked West Lauderdale, setting up a showdown with Itawamba. All right, let's go 3A ball. The Aggies of Kosuth went down to Yazoo County. The Aggies enter tonight's game on an eight-game winning streak. Just kind of like quietly dominating up there. Uh, but in the first quarter, it was Yazoo County that came out firing. They were the home team, so had a little bit of an advantage. Donathan Green kept it himself. Nice dive to the pylon. Referees, touchdown. And here on the extra point, bad snap, but no problem. Sendarius Kraft, he's crafty, and runs it in. Two-point conversion, good, eight to nothing. Kasuth on the attack now. Hunter Bright got the catch and got a big-time gain trying to outrun him. Oh, don't pay attention to him. Just run for the end zone. Oh, out of bounds. Next play, a nice run right there. Oh, but fumbles the ball. No problem, though, for Kasuth. They go on to win their ninth game in a row, 27-14 to over Yazoo County. So let's look at the rest of 3A. Amory stomped Independence. That will results in Kasuth and Amory in the next round. Winona, they took care of business against Noxubee County. No three straights north half titles for Noxubee County. And North Panola, Aberdeen scored first, but North Panola didn't uh, let them score after that. 20 to six was the final. And now it is time for Band of the Week, but don't go anywhere. Much more highlights after the break. The 
Friday Night Beaver Band of the Week is sponsored by Northeast Mississippi Community College. Friday Night Fever Cheer Squad of the Week is sponsored by Magnolia Soap and Bath Company. Congratulations to East Webster, our cheer team of the week. Rhea Thornton, she's been hanging out in the cold at Hamlin Stadium, just itching to give y'all an update on West Point. The Green Wave hosted Ridgeland, a team that took them down to the wire in the playoffs last season. Rhea, what happened? Well, Matt, to put it kindly, this game was nothing like last year's nail-biter. In fact, it was basically over at halftime. When I first got here, West Point already led 27-0, to zero, and they just kept adding points to the board in the second. On their first drive of the half, the Greenway found their way across the goal line with this handoff to Jaquintas Harris. Nice punch in by the senior running back to give them the 34-point lead. But hang on. We've got more from the Green Wave's offense. Kanan Daniels lobbed it up to Colin Ferguson. He made the great catch in the end zone to further West Point's lead. Well-deserved flex right there. And just when it looked like Ridgeland may have a chance to finally get into the end zone, the Green Wave defense said, nah. Jacoby McQuiller got up for the interception. Play by the senior. Now Ridgeland did finally score, but at that point, it didn't matter. West Point demolished them. 40 to 7. A way to start off the postseason. Talk about momentum at a good point in your season. West Point will be taking on Vicksburg next week. I'm not sure where they will be playing, but they will be taking on Vicksburg. Reporting live in West Point for Friday Night Fever, Bria Thornton, WTVA 9 Sports. Yeah, nobody understands how the playoffs work. We'll, we'll figure that out. We'll put it on the website. Holmes County Central went into Oxford and stunned the Commodores with a big win, 43-16. to Let's do 6A now. Starkville won the district, and tonight they hosted Hernando. It was the first round of the 6A playoffs for the Starkville Yellow Jackets, and this was a battle at the beginning. Let's start off late in the first quarter. Starkville trailed 7-0, but not for long. In under a minute, the Jackets stormed down the field and finished the drive with this rushing touchdown by Jordan Mitchell. And there were a lot of touchdowns in this game by Starkville. And here's another one. Oh, Trey Petty, uh, Burnsides. Yeah, Stonka touchdown. Starkville, they were like, it was a pretty competitive game. And then they won 63 to 21. They'll play South Haven next week. And everyone had South Panola in this one except Oxford and they won 35 to 28. They'll play Madison Central next week. Remember, tomorrow the voting will open for Giant of the Week. Four players nominated, one shall win. Have a great weekend.